Washington, D.C., April 2011. The FBI releases thousands of files as part of its online FBI vault. One particular file draws the attention of the media and independent researchers. The memo, dated March 22, 1950, is a briefing to FBI Director J. Edgar Hoover regarding informant information about three flying saucers that were recovered in New Mexico. Investigators immediately connect the memo to the infamous Roswell incident, a purported UFO crash that many people believe was covered up by the military in 1947. But this document is just the latest in a series of government files that have been released in recent years, suggesting there may be more to the Roswell crash than the public was told. As an investigative reporter, I think what I am amazed by is how many leaked documents from the 1940s have actually come out into the world and lay out details about what really happened at Roswell. On July 4th, a rancher named Mac Brazel finds all kinds of strange silver debris he knows he doesn't understand what he's walking through. He decides to go into Roswell and tell the sheriff, something has crashed on my ranch. Intel coming out of Roswell Army Airfield get assigned to go to the debris field. And these men are told that they are to pick up every single thing that is in the debris field on the Mac Brazel Ranch. Everything is to be picked up. On July 8, 1947, the headline on the front page of the Roswell Daily Record reports that the military had retrieved a flying saucer. But the following day, the official story is suddenly changed to suggest it was nothing more than a failed weather balloon. Roswell was the home of the 509th Bomb Group. This was the only atomic bomb capable squadron anywhere in the world. These people were the best of the best. The idea that intelligence personnel at this base would mistake a weather balloon for something exotic is preposterous. So that, arguably, is the start of the UFO cover-up. Weather balloons, swamp gas, meteorite, it doesn't matter. It's always something else but a UFO. The Roswell crash was covered up. The fact that they retracted the story of having captured a flying saucer, in my opinion, it was quick PR damage control. World was told, nope, just a weather balloon. And for more than 30 years, that's where it was left until witnesses started to surface saying, no, it was actually an extraterrestrial craft. And the people saw alien bodies. Roswell researchers suggest a government-sanctioned bond of secrecy has prevented witnesses of the crash and retrieval from coming forward publicly. But many did choose to come forward later in life including the first military officer to arrive at the Roswell crash site, Major Jesse Marcel. According to his grandson, Marcel privately shared many details of his experience with the family. My grandfather, Major Jesse Marcel, he was the head of intelligence for the 509th Bombing Group. As a kid, basically around the dinner table, we talked about Roswell. And through conversations, we learned that my grandfather was the lead investigator into what has become known as the Roswell incident. And when he was looking at debris, he couldn't make heads or tails or any sense out of what he was looking at. He had gathered some of the debris and decided to take it home with him. He kind of came to this idea that he said, you know, whatever this stuff is, it's very significant. It's going to change humanity. And I want my family to be part of it. This is very important. According to the family's story, Major Marcel came home after his first visit to the site and laid the debris out on the floor of their kitchen. Some of the material was a strange, thin metal, similar to foil. 
except when crumpled up into a ball, it would bounce back to its flawless state. Marcel also claims the metal was not the same material featured in newspaper photographs being held by his grandfather. There's a pretty famous picture of him holding a piece of debris, which is trying to just a piece of foil, basically, and it was weather balloon material. He grudgingly went along with the story, held it, and if you take a look at that, you'll notice that he's not looking at the camera. He's looking up somebody barking him orders. He fell in line uh, begrudgingly and did what he was supposed to do. San Diego, California, November 14th, 2004. Two fighter pilots from the aircraft carrier USS Nimitz investigate an unidentified aircraft off the coast of San Diego. They encounter a bright white oval-shaped craft that resembles a massive tic-tac. It's over 40 feet long, and it has no windshield or wings. Oh my gosh, dude. According to Navy pilot David Fravor, the ship makes seemingly impossible stops and turns over the Pacific before accelerating away at thousands of miles per hour. And this is David Fravor, a skilled pilot. He said, I am looking at speeds, 90 degree angles, stopping any human inside of what I'm watching could not sustain life. We have these videotapes. We can actually calculate the velocity of these objects. We can calculate the g-forces on these ships. So that's the sea change. It used to be that if you were a UFO believer, the burden of proof was on you to prove that you saw something in the sky. Now it's shifted. Now the establishment has to prove that it isn't a, a visitor from another planet. For UFO researchers, the recent videos finally provide clear evidence, not only of what the government has been hiding for decades, My gosh. Oh, thank you. but the potential reason for the cover-up. The technology is the key. If any single factor explains UFO secrecy, it's the aspiration to acquire extraterrestrial technology. The nation that first acquires that technology is going to be in game-changing territory. This is truly an arms race. Whoever figures this out first wins. So any developed nation is looking right now to leap ahead with a technological innovation based upon the reverse engineering of what we're seeing in the skies, what our pilots are engaging in the skies, what Commander Fravor chased. Some disclosure advocates say that the reason why we haven't seen disclosure yet is because of economics, that you have an oil-based economy, and clearly the crap that we see in the skies are not running on oil. They're using advanced propulsion systems that would completely transform the economies of Earth if they're ever implemented. So, yes, it would have a negative financial impact for the wealthiest people who own the oil in the ground. But it's not the whole story. The government seems to be completely unaccountable to the American public. They may be accountable to their superiors in the Department of Defense or at NASA or others, but they rarely release anything they do know. I think we're afraid to find out what these phenomena are, but governments in particular are afraid. And the reason for that, I think, is because the contract between governments and their people is that governments provide security and then we provide loyalty to the government. If you even raise the issue of the possibility that UFOs are ETs, then that raises big questions about that contract because it's clear that the government cannot provide security for us from these beings. And that would call into question, well, why should I be loyal to the government and everything else? It would undermine the sovereignty of the government, the sovereignty of the state. Washington, D.C., October 2017. After Luis Elizondo resigns from his position with ATIP and leaves the Pentagon, he shares three declassified videos recorded by Navy pilots with his new colleagues at To The Stars Academy. 
The first object, known as Tic Tac, was caught on radar in 2004 off the USS Nimitz at an altitude of 80,000 feet. As Navy F-18s approached the object, it descended to within one foot of the water in seconds. We don't have this capability of dropping 80,000 feet within a matter of seconds, hitting a velocity of Mach 20. So we now know that there's some kind of propulsion system that exceeds the capability of our own rocket. Naval aviator Lieutenant Chad Underwood was ordered to pursue the object in an F-18 equipped with a sophisticated FLIR video system. The object looked featureless, and that's why I called it the Tic Tac. It looked like a Tic Tac. It had no wings, no method of propulsion, and on your forward-looking infrared pod, all it is is tracking heat. So you would typically see engine exhaust coming out of one of the ends of the aircraft, not seeing any of it. The object was changing altitude, airspeed, things that my FLIR and my radar were having difficulty tracking. And then at the end of the encounter is when you see it dart off to my left on the FLIR pod. And that's when I was like, whoa, what just happened? The other two videos Elizondo brought to his colleagues at To The Stars Academy were equally groundbreaking. Known as Gimbal and Go Fast, both videos were taken by Navy jets from the USS Theodore Roosevelt near the Florida coast in 2015. All three videos show objects moving in ways that defy the known laws of physics. These objects can zigzag effortlessly, defying the known laws of aerodynamics. These objects can effortlessly accelerate up to 20 times the speed of sound. They have no visible means of propulsion. So what could it be? Well, the short answer is we don't know. The phenomena had unusual flight characteristics, unusual vectors, speed, being able to hover and move. The fact that the Chinese or the Russians or anyone else would have that kind of capability and we wouldn't know about it is pretty slim. As head of ATIP, Elizondo was able to have the videos declassified, but they had never been made public. His involvement in To The Stars Academy offered a new opportunity to share the remarkable information collected at the Pentagon. To The Stars, their goal was that they were gonna crack it all open and they were going to open up the truth that the government knows about these unidentified aerial phenomena that have a technology that does not exist in terms of human production. Washington, D.C., June 25th, 2021. The Pentagon's UAP task force, along with the Office of the Director of National Intelligence, submits to Congress its long-awaited report entitled Preliminary Assessment, Unidentified Aerial Phenomena. The simple nine-page report represents the most direct and substantive U.S. government account of UAPs ever made public. The headline is that out of 144 reported encounters, only one UAP was identified as a large deflating balloon. The other reported UAPs remain unexplained. I thought that report was tremendous, a tremendously important step forward. To me, it says two things. UFOs are real, and two, they're not ours. I thought it was an astonishing report, and it spoke volumes. We got 144 cases. We can't figure out 143 of them. It's monumental. I mean, it is a watershed moment. We're giving cover and relief for folks who are in the intelligence community now and work for our government, and folks who have served, and pilots who can now talk about this thing. It's only a preliminary assessment. Some people in the UFO community were a bit disappointed because it wasn't disclosure. But what it did say was, I think, very encouraging and important. It essentially said that whatever UFOs are, some of these sightings demonstrate advanced technology. 
and this, in one sense, is a form of disclosure. It's certainly taking this further than it's ever been taken before within government. It's quite an admission. Of the 144 reports that the UAP task force reviewed, the bulk of the sightings had occurred between 2019 and 2021, after the Navy reporting protocol was put into effect. But perhaps what is most compelling is the revelation that out of the 144 reported UAP sightings, only one sighting has been explained. Only one out of them has been shown to be spurious. That indicates to me that we're sitting on a gold mine, a gold mine of incidences that cannot be explained using the normal metrics. We're talking about incidences that are beyond the stretch of our imagination that indicate new laws of physics opening up, and we physicists are just dying to get access to it. The report established five potential explanatory categories airborne clutter, natural atmospheric phenomena, U.S. government or American industry developmental programs, foreign adversary systems, and a category for UAP reports that require additional analysis, simply called other. Other simply means beyond the known technologies of today, which could be extraterrestrial or who knows. But I think the military is now admitting other could mean extraterrestrial. Although the word extraterrestrial never appears in the report, many observers believe it contains one very profound statement. There's a bombshell quote in the report that a lot of people have missed, and it says essentially that we may have to fundamentally change our understanding of the laws of physics to figure out what's going on here. We may require additional scientific knowledge to successfully collect on, analyze, and characterize some of them, pending scientific advances that allowed us to better understand them. This is not a sci-fi novel. This is a government report. That was the thing that most stuck out to me as jaw-dropping. Our current science, our current tech can understand some of these. The government said that. Wow. Additional scientific knowledge could mean knowledge beyond the known laws of physics. In other words, the technology thousands of years more advanced than ours.